talk to our listeners about what it looks like to deliver this type of, of, of treatment that you're talking about. Obviously, uh, that's a broad question, but share with us, Sam, maybe pull something out from the book or, or whatnot. One of the things before, <laughs> there's so many things I want to talk to you about. Well, as I was going through the book, there was a paragraph where you talked about um, you were you were kind of dealing with a psychiatrist who had looked through this chart of this guy and was was not looking through the trauma informed lens. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, for sure. Um, I was talking about a situation as many of us who are clinicians have, where you're working in an interdisciplinary team environment. Um, and a psychiatrist essentially had diagnosed this patient I was working with, with conduct disorder. And, you know, in, in my opinion, that's a really heavy diagnosis to put on somebody, uh, particularly when you're not during a full, like, psychosocial history. And in my opinion, in working with this young person, a lot of the manifestations of that conduct disorder, you know, the behavioral um, outbursts, the violence, the, um, the oppositionalness, things like that. Really, because I worked with this particular client very closely, um, to me, my conceptual framework and my kind of case conceptual map, I guess you can say, was that a lot of that was coming from trauma and just the, the deep violence and deep trauma that this young person had experienced in their lives. Um, and so, you know, there was that tension there where it was like, you know, the, the, there was one person on the team just looking at the symptoms in a vacuum mm -hmm. without contextualizing it. And then there was me trying to look at the real background history of what was going on. And again, and, and that's one of the things that I think is another, at least on the clinical side for psychologists and marriage and family therapists and social workers and licensed professionals, it's like, we are trained to look at the context of what's going on. And if you don't do that, then I would argue you're not looking at it through a trauma-informed lens. Not that every symptom comes from trauma. I'm not trying to say that. I'm not trying to make a blanket statement. But particularly with this client, it, it, it really felt like it did based on all my training, based on my work with this young person, based on my research. And, you know, again, I, I just, in, in my opinion, I think the, the diagnosis of conduct disorder um, just holds a lot of weight to it because as you know, and probably as a lot of your listeners know, that tends to transform from, a, from a, a person who's under 18 to when they traverse into adulthood to antisocial personality disorder, which is also a very heavy diagnosis, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so not looking at those contextual factors, that's why I wanted to write about that experience in the book. It's like we're, we're caught in these scenarios all the time in these interdisciplinary teams where we may differ, have a difference of opinion and a difference of expertise with somebody we're working with. And what do we do? How do we deal with that? You know, how do I still come at it from a place of integrity and still try to build that relationship with the psychiatrist in that situation to, you know, give them my clinical expertise and so on and so forth so that we can provide the best care uh, for this young person. So That's book four. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs>